Before we get into this episode, I just want to give a quick shout out to Jewelry Kings for proudly sponsoring this video. Jewelry Kings is Australia's number one source for the freshest urban and hip hop jewelry, including watches, chains, bracelets, rings, pendants, and accessories. Use our discount code TSDU, which will pop up on your screen for 10% off all your purchases. Hey, what's doing everybody? My name is Tim and this is episode five of the Sound Down Under, where we present to you our unique discoveries in the art and entertainment industry here in Australia. Today I've met up with a hip hop pioneer in Australia in the early 2000s. He was one of the rappers at the time that transcended Aussie hip hop, collaborating with um, famous artists like Tech 9 Red Foo, Proof from V12, and Rucker from Dilated Peoples. He is a father of three, he's a co-host of The Edge 96.1, he's a GDOP ambassador, a sneakerhead, a cartoonist, and a rapper. I present to you, Lee Monroe and his latest release, Over and Over, is now on all digital streaming platforms. Thanks for having us, brother. My man. Hey! We're here, bro. Tim Bautista. What's up? <laughs> come, come. Hey, Emily. Come here, Emily. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to get straight to the juice, bro. Yeah. Um, so, first of all, to the people that don't know you, hmm. um, when did you start your music career? Uh, I started actually writing music when I was 14, so yeah, I'm, a, I'm an old ass man. You, you, don't know. Have to, what? you don't you don't have to say how old you are, but yeah. 36, G. <laughs> 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 nah, that's all good. I'm young at heart. Um, but anyway, so I started when I was 14, but probably, I know it's going to sound a bit funny, but probably took a little bit more serious when I was, I started getting 16, started getting on stages and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, um, that was probably about... 95, 96, that was when I sort of started. Mm -hmm. um, From that point, how long did it take you? 2000, 2003 is actually when I, when I inked my, my deal um, with um, uh, Sony BMG, so it, was, so it was crazy. But yeah, I don't know, man, it, was, it started, I suppose, when I was 14. Um, and then 2003 was when I actually signed my deal. But prior to that, it actually took me two years of just independent grind. I used to work in a retail job. And then, yeah, now here we are. There's, I'm still doing it. You know, people, <laughs> people would have thought I would have given up by now. would have had like a walking stick and a cane, but it's all good. Yeah, out here doing it, eh? Yes. How was the hip-hop scene back in like the early 2000s <coughs> compared to now as well? You know, it was so different. Um, you know, it was still... CDs, there were still cassettes, oh. like mixtapes were chucked around on cassettes. Um, cassettes? Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, it was crazy. Uh, CDs. Um, and yeah, the, it, the scene was a lot different. You had to, you know, there was none of this behind a computer. There was no such thing as YouTube. There was no, yeah. you know, so if you needed to get a rep, like you'd have to be out at the live shows. You'd have to be talking to people. Yeah, 100 meeting with everybody, networking, networking. Meeting, it was all face to face, you know. And if you couldn't hold it down live and in front of people, then. Yeah. That's it. Get out know. of there, eh? Um, the other thing was a little bit harder to get opportunities because the people that were on the mics were probably a little bit more revered. So, you know, if mm. someone was on the mic was an MC at a club, you know, they'd be like looking, you know, you'd be looking up to them and, and they'd, they'd sort of be like very selective about who they put mm. on the mic. So mm. if you had that opportunity, sometimes that opportunity wasn't at 10, a, uh, 10 p.m., you know what I mean? Mm. Sometimes that opportunity was at 3 a.m. So Ooh. it was crazy being, um, being young, uh, funnily enough, being white. Being, mm. being skinny, um, being small, you know, sometimes I'd have to go out and, and stay out till, you know, 3 a.m. just to get like 16 bars on the mic and Far hopefully out. impress whoever was yeah. the MC on the night. I feel <laughs> like um, like the scene or the culture back then in hip hop was like, everyone's like tough, like they got that tough strength, like mentality kind of thing. Now it's like more partying, fun vibes, like I don't really give a F what I'm doing. Well, in terms of what I hear on the radio compared to like what was back then. Yeah, it was, it was a little, it was a little bit more territorial. And if and even if you were out partying, you know, like, um, you know, all the dudes would just be like mean mugging and they'd be on the walls, you yeah. know, like just yeah. like sort of kicking back and just like sort of just scoping it. And yeah, I just don't know. you out and stuff. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So, yeah, so it was different like that. But, you know, um, there's still an element of that, I suppose, these days, but yeah, that was the biggest difference, I think. Yeah, compared to now? Yeah. What 100%. do you see now? Uh, What's different in this scene compared to that one? Look, to be honest, now, these days, I just feel it's like, you know, it's a lot softer. You know, a lot of people beh hide behind the internet. Like, that was one thing that gave me a mad complex when it came out. There was no internet when I started, and then when I came out and I was a commercial, mm. you know, yeah, MC, yeah. Um, it was crazy because, you know, um, 
you know, people would say stuff on the internet, but I grew up in Bankstown, so hey. if, you had, if, you, if you had something to say, like you'd say it to someone and let, you know, you'd like, squash you'd it fight about then it, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, or, or, or whatever, you'd argue about it or you'd put it on the spot. The crazy thing that I couldn't get my head around early stages was like, you know, um, people would say stuff on the internet, but you'd see them out and it's all good. And you'd yeah. go, hang on, you're like tough on the internet, but in real life, like you're soft. Mm. You know, yeah, yeah, so yeah. that was one thing that I had to, you know, accustom myself to, and that, that's a massive difference now, and that still lingers today. You know, a lot of people, a lot of talk on the internet. You know, they got their internet personas. I was actually mm. just having a chat to my friend about this the other day. Is that, you know, we now in an age where kids, like, they function on a day-to-day -day basis with their online persona, and then they're out of, you know, the offline persona. Mm. You know, so everybody almost is schizophrenic to a degree. They, to a degree, they, yeah. they have two entities of themselves you know yeah whereas back in the day it was just you just you so you, you know like and and there was no other platform to deliver yourself on so it what was you just what you get it was, yeah it was, it, was, it was truest all the time yeah, um yeah. so so yeah so that's a that's a massive difference what strides has australia taken in the hip-hop community uh from back then to now has it has it taken a step forward has it taken a step back is it progressing i see uh, a lot of artists out there now it's had a bit of a stalemate I feel, and it has been for a while. Tough part about um, hip hop in Australia is, and um, I won't delve too much in this, into this because it is a um, is a massive conversation on, on my end. But um, mm. you know, identity in Australian music is is very confused. You know, um, in terms of like accents and stuff as well. I or don't is that like one? to say accent. I like to say I like to say um, delivery. Delivery. Um, delivery. You know, yeah. like. At the end of the day, uh, we're speaking very high, you know, we're speaking with regards to our content and we're getting all that right. Mm. But in terms of, um, you know, um, how we're saying it and what we're talking, you know, you know how, how we're delivering it to the masses, you know, it's still very confused, you know. So mm. there's people from the States and a perfect example was the other day I saw um, Big Boy. Um, he was looking at um, Australian clips and he saw, um, AB original. Mm. And he's like, yo, this is dope. Like, I, I like the message, I like the content, all that. And it was true Australian, so it made me wasn't as gravitating towards the sound, but the message, the message like he was feeling. And next video I saw was him listening to Manu Crooks, right? Mm. And we all know Manu, like he's from the area, you know. Shout what out I mean? Manu. Mm, shout out Manu. And and he and he had heard Manu. Um, and he was like, yo, I've heard this. Straight away, like I was like, yo, that's crazy. That's big, big boys heard big Manu, boy. right? You know, so yeah. the first thing he said after, straight after that was like, oh, is this from here? I didn't think it was from here. Oh, wow. So, you know, you got this, you know, myself as an artist and where I've come from, and we'll talk about this later as well, but mm. I look at like the identity of Australian hip hop and I go, well, that's crazy because like a really proud moment is instantaneously polarized by the guy not knowing he's from my area. Mm. So then, I turn around and I'm like, that that sucks because like I want him to know that we're dope and I want him to know that we're from where we're from. You know what I mean? Not like I think he's from the UK or whatever. You know? So it's for me. I'm not trying to tell people what to do. However, I just want people to understand like probably you know the the uh, benefits of delivering it a certain way. Do you know what I mean? For the for the bigger picture. It's authentic. Yeah, just the that authenticity. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, and you know, ultimately, the the, the 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 reason why that's a tough conversation is because everybody's doing their art for themselves, right? So you can't be one to to dictate to someone's like, well, this is how you need to do your art. You need to do your art how you feel you need to do it. Mm. However, in, in terms of the bigger responsibility, particularly with regards to hip hop, you know, you look at that and you're like, well, we could be accomplishing so much more. People could be eating so much better. If we started As to Australians. start to work on identity, yeah, yeah. That's like other like other cultures like outside of Australia start picking up mannerisms and and like um, well, they start colloquialisms. We, exactly, they, they start to understand the Aussie culture. And 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 Aussie <clears throat> culture, that's a massive thing as well, you know. And and you know, I'll try not, I'll try to keep this as brief as possible, like so as to not like convolute it. But if you think about it, you know, what is Australian identity? You know, we grew up in West Sydney. What Australian identity is to us is a far cry from what it is to the rest of Australia. Yeah, it's a massively <laughs> racist country, right? Pretty big racist a, country. A, a, any any one of my mates that's grown up in West Sydney has <clears throat> suffered a degree of racism. I still cop it today. One hundred and ten percent, you do, right? So, 
The problem is, is you know, a lot of my mates that are other Nashos, you know, they're literally first generation Australians or their kids will be first generation Australians of their heritage, oh. right? So say for, for yourself, right? Your your parents like moved here? They moved here, yeah. Okay, cool. So, first so you're first generation Australian, you know what I mean? So for yourself, what is an Australian identity? You know, mm. that that's, that's a tough question because it's hard to embrace Mm. that you're Australian when you get more love from your heritage than you do in the country you're born in. You walk, out the, out. You walk outside of your door, mm. instantaneously, the country you're born in that you're supposed to be proud of is like, yo, you're, you're an Asian, get out. Like, you know, yeah. like the, you're copying racial slurs, cabs don't pull up for you. Yeah. Yet, artistically, you're supposed to gravitate towards representing that. Yeah. That's, there's like that's a mind, that's, yeah, like there's such a disconnect, right? Yeah, so 100%. You can't blame someone for not wanting to embrace Australia. But also, the, 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 you want to the messed up thing is, is like, it's actually more important that you do because it's going to be your kids and that, that next generation of Australians, mm. they need to see someone that's strong enough to stand up and mm. then and represent, mm. you know what I mean, as, as somebody that's of another heritage because that is what true Australia is. What it's gem. progressive, it's it's next level, you know. So, We're still young as a country as well, so. 110%. I feel like, I feel so, like we'll grow in, term, in terms of that as well. Yeah. You've always had a transparency with your followers. Yeah. Uh, and you've suffered from having mental health um, issues. Yeah. Um, a lot of rappers are even, or even people, mm. are, are like afraid or think it's soft to come out and make it public or like yeah. just let, let someone else know. Um, I'm glad you're open about it. Mm. Um, do you have a message for those people who are kind of going through the same thing or like that, that uh, I don't know, like just get them to open up about it because it's not a healthy thing. I've lost a friend to suicide because yeah. he didn't open up. Yeah. So, um, and I'm glad that you're open about it. So do you have a message for those that are kind of like in the, in the dark light that don't want to release anything or like? It's sort of hard, you know, like mm. I, you can't tell somebody, I personally never knew what it was like to suffer that sort of stuff until, you know, until I you, mean, you know me very well, you know, and uh, I'm not afraid to put it out there. I've got a strong relationship with my ex-wife. Um, and you know, so a split hit me hard. And as a man, you know, I felt emasculated and you know I'd lost the one thing that you know you sort of pride yourself on and mm. and that was a relationship and, and, a, and, a, and a happy family to what people would consider it to be mm. um, so yeah man I had a lot of like uh, sort of searching to do and I got into that that depression that uh, state, yeah. and and yeah and and get into that anxiety what I found like when I actually got to that really dark place um, Bro, you get a respect for it, man. Like I was literally like, oh, you know, now I've got a beautiful home. Like I have my kids. I've got a great relationship with my ex. I've got a, you know, a beautiful new uh, missus. And mm. good things uh, came out of it. Pretty uh, much what you're saying. Good things will always come out of it. Of course. However, you know, you all, but sometimes to appreciate the good, you have to go through the really, really bad. You have to hit rock bottom. Pretty yeah. Much, yeah. And so, you know, but when you're in that spot, I didn't realize how hard it was to get out. Like I'd never been there. I'd had mm. friends that had gone through it. Like I had. MCs and like music colleagues that had gone through it, you mm. know, not to, I don't need to even say, you know, people that they yeah, are, but, yeah. but I was always the person like they'd be in that spot. I'd be like, yo, don't worry about it, man. Just shake it off. Get out. You know, thinking that I knew what it was. Mm. It wasn't until like I hit that rock bottom, man. Mm. I remember like when I moved out of like, I had a big, beautiful home, like double, you know, double garage, like big maple trees, you know, mm. lawns. I had the dog, I had the family, big house, all this, you, that. You, you were know. living in the Aussie dream pretty I much. I live in it, right? Yeah, yeah. And then when I lost it, and then I was in this like little shit house place in Wentworthville, like, you know what I mean? With like, you know, I had my two kids. I had three kids. I had to buy a cot off Gumtree in the other room. Yeah. And then I had like, I was literally sleeping on these lounges. One was a fold out, had one kid next to me and the other kid on the two seat. I just thought, you know, and, and this was what their dad had become, you know? And mm. man, I used to sit there and, um, and drove, like cry myself to sleep like it was it was that heavy you know um, but I was like you know obviously I was blessed with the fact that I have children that I couldn't leave yeah, yeah 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 so like I, like they were my blessing because then like at the end of the day if I ever had those those self-harming thoughts or whatever like I would just, all I'd have to do is picture my how it would offend my children that's true what you're leaving behind pretty much could you, I just I love, I love these guys so much like if they ever for them to wake up and be like, yo, my dad's not here. Like that, like, I couldn't do that to them. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Or anyone that I love. So I was lucky be. with that. Some people don't have that. Mm. So sometimes, now it's just important that you speak up. Mm. And sometimes you're not even speaking up for yourself. 
you're actually speaking up for the people that can't speak up. You know, mm. how many times I've posted something on mental health and it will mm. just be it will just be me venting or whatever. Mm, mm. And you know, I'll have guys hit me up and be like, yo man, like I'm actually going through this, this, that and just seeing your status helped me just today. And bro, if it's wow. just that one extra day that got gets them to the next day where they make up their mind to to get help or, or you forward. know, like that man, that's that's why it's important, you know. You're mm. never speaking for yourself actually, mm. like you're actually speaking for others, you know. So yeah, so it's super important that you talk. Is there a helpline that uh, people can contact or Yeah bro, there's um Beyond Blue Contact uh, Lee. No, yeah. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I, always say, I always say if I ever see people actually put up statuses and crazy stuff, I actually hit them up and I just say, I'll say, yo, are you okay? Are you okay? You know, yeah. are you okay? Like, I know that sounds cliche and all that, whatever, whatever, but like, you'll be surprised how much power that sentence has. And that's all it takes. Yeah, are you okay? And literally people will snap. As soon as they hit, see that, are you okay? Straight away, they know one person cares. That's one more than zero. Better than a, a, lot of, a lot of the time, people will just be like, yo, um, okay, maybe I'm, I'm not off as bad off as I think. Mm. All right, this is all we have for today. Thanks, Lee, for opening up your house. Bro, anytime. Good to see the kids you should, again. You should be over here more often, mate. Yeah, all right, 100%. let's do it. Yeah, Smash you in a game of two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll see. I haven't played it. <laughs> but um, do you have any final shout outs? Um, anything that you want to promote or like um, what's happening? What's going on in your life? What's yeah, Final man, this, this is this is this is all you, man. This is all Bro, you, man. no, thank you, thank you for coming, coming and chilling, my man. Um, make sure you, you check out Tim, Tim Bautista, Tim, but whatever he's calling himself these days. Timba, Timba. Um, and uh, man, so massive props to you. Thank you, and Thanks, uh, luck for this. But um, yeah, no, just Lee Monroe. Make sure you follow on the Instagram. It's probably the most active one that I'm on. Um, and yeah, make sure you download uh, over and over. Keep Spotify, it, Apple, yep. everything. Everything, all, all digital platforms. platforms. Um, and yeah, just shout out to all my artists doing it, all the artists getting it um, and, and doing their thing. Anyone going through depression, make sure you like shouting out to people. Um, holla at your people. Um, and then obviously um, my kids, Phoebe, Miles, Amelia, love you. Kenzie, love you. Um, and Veronica and the fam over there. And that's about it, man. Sweet. Any shows? Shows. Yo, I've got um, Obi Trice coming up. Um, I've got Ritz, uh, Stevie Stone, and uh, and Gmo Ski coming up as well. Um, so I think the Gmo Ski and uh, Ritz and Stevie Stone is on the 20th mm. of this month. And mm. then the Obi Trice is on the 20th of next month. I just hit up my boy. Um, Poetic, so uh, we might be doing some NZ shows. Um, Oi, in the pipeline, huh? Year. Yep. Um, right, and and yeah, that's about it. But other than that, like I said, if you keep on my Instagram, um, you'll see all the updates. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you'll see more than updates. You'll see me, <laughs> my kids, soccer, yep. you know, drawing, uh, everything. Yo, you know that's how it. Yo, thanks guys. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Shout out to the cheat coders. Um, and yeah, thank you.